All right, I wanted to show you how to properly do a brake line switch right here. So what we've got, this is a pre-made brake line from Napa, and we have a faulty end on it. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to take these little cutters here, and we're going to cut this off. So you tighten it, finger tight, and then rotate it. Tighten it a little, rotate it. Keep doing that until it comes off. Okay, so we got it off. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure your nut is on, make sure it's on the right direction. So that's the side you're gonna swedge. So you're gonna make this go on like that with the threads pointing out. The very next thing is very important. You're gonna take a knife or a razor knife and you've got a lip inside of this hole. You've got to cut that lip out. You sit here and you just kinda of cut that lip out. You don't wanna slip cut your hand but you want to cut that lip out. What that does, if you left that metal in there, it'll make it stronger, a little bit stronger in one area, and it'll push the cone of the swedging tool off to one side, and your swedge will come out crooked, and then your brake line will leak. So we've got that nice and cleaned out. And figure out which one of these holes on this is the right side. So you got 3 16 brake line. So you're going to do that. And you want this thing sitting out ever so slightly. Let's see if you can see this. I mean, basically that's it. It's not sticking out far at all. Camera won't even zoom in on it, but whatever. I mean, we're talking a, a blade thickness. If you were to take your blade and go like that, that's how far it sticks out from it. Just barely. Then you tighten down on it. And you take your swedging tool, and you lock it in, you put the cone in there, And then you just tighten it. And I'm not going to tighten it because I have to put it in the car first and then I have to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the swedging tool, put it on, put the cone in there, lock it in, and what we're going to do is now we're going to tighten. So we're going to tighten it half a turn, loosen it. Make sure it's locked in first. Now it's locked in. So we're going to tighten it and turn back. Tighten it, turn back. Tighten it, turn back. Tighten it one more time and then remove it. Okay. <clears throat> we have uh, all this stuff removed and I just wanted to show you the flare. So, the flare actually turned out really nice. So this was the one that we just bent, and this is going to go right into there. I'll put 
put that in, make sure she bites. What I like to do is tighten it once, loosen it, tighten again, loosen it, and then tighten it again. What that's doing, that's kind of forming and seeding the flare into what we're tightening it into here. This one has already been done. Now, what this will do, we can now take, <clears throat> we're going to sit here and we're going to shift while we're racing, and we have to have these fully accessible, whether the driver is 5 foot 7 or whether the driver is 6 foot 4, and the seat is adjustable, and the seat will slide forward, so now I'm short, I'm 5'9". So now I can shift, but I can still reach down here and feel these levers. And when I need more rear braking, I just put them to the rear. So as the day goes on, I can reach down here and I can bump one back, bump another one back. And if I notice that my back passenger side tire is locking up, but the driver side one isn't, I can take a little bit away from that back passenger side tire. Push them forward to get more front brake, push them back to get more back brake. That seemed like the most common sense thing to do. Now even though the arrow points towards the back, you would think flip them around, I don't know. I just, I have different, different mindset. You want more rear brake, push it to the rear. You want more front brake and less rear brake, you put them to the front. So that's my theory behind it. Now that it's mounted up front, I don't know if you can see that, but there's the mount right there. This has all become very rigid now. And you can see that it's all kind of spaced apart. So I'm going to go ahead and try and straighten it some. And then we're going to wrap it. All right. Gonna go ahead and wrap it and separate some of it. Slide this back here so it's making contact. We can wrap this right here with electrical tape or something like that if we choose to. The more of these clamps here, we're gonna go ahead and we might attach it right here, but we'll probably attach it back here to this bolt. Yeah, it won't go through either hole, so I'm going to have to go drill that out. That looks perfect to me. We have a new bolt. We're gonna go ahead and try. 
since the other bowl had the washer on it. Put this one in the same spot. Try again. Oh yeah, that works great. Gonna go ahead and try to keep that straight. Nice and tight. Look at these. Nice and tight. No flex. None of these back here are going to move. We move that up closer to there. Push that down a little bit. That looks damn good to me, boss. Upside down. Nice and tight. Let's see, we look at that. And it doesn't move. And we'll come over here and we pull on it. It doesn't move. So here's the finished product on the brakes. Now the video is all chopped up. But so we got this one mounted here that keeps this line right here rigid. This would be your out feed for the back passenger. And then we have this clamp here. The little split hose here to keep these two from vibrating and then we come up here we have another clamp here we had to put a, a nut underneath that just a giant nut that way it's basically just a spacer instead of cutting it out like i did that one the contour of the lines kind of flowed that way so it made more sense to keep that up and then you just follow it right on up we've got another clamp up there then they curve on up, and they go right out the firewall through the grommet. Everything seems to look pretty copacetic. I'm very happy with how that turned out.